Berlin, the German capital, is a 21st century metropolis in the heart of Europe. It has a long history, famous historic buildings and unique architectural monuments from various eras through to contemporary architecture. All these modern buildings and projects consist of quality controlled construction materials with selected characteristics, extreme resistance and high demands on environmental compatibility, on static equilibrium and structural safety. The company Testing Bloom and Feuerhardt is based in this European city. In its modern production facilities, Testing, one of the most renowned German providers of complete construction material testing laboratories, manufactures testing machines, premium laboratory devices, as well as stainless steel laboratory equipment of the highest quality. Our product portfolio contains around 3,500 different, mainly standardized products. For new and further developments, we have experienced mechanical engineers, electricians, hydraulic specialists and concrete experts at our disposal. Here, a new Blaine device is being developed in the engineering department. We currently produce the widest range of Blaine devices worldwide from simple hand-operated devices to computer-controlled automatic models. The electronic Blaine device number 1.0290 is used exclusively to determine the grinding fineness of cement and should only be used for this purpose. To determine the grinding fineness of cement, its specific surface area must be established from the air permeability of an accurately defined compacted cement bed. This is done by observing the time taken for a fixed quantity of air to flow through the cement bed. This time is then a measure for the specific surface area, which is indicated in square centimetres per gram. The laboratory, testing equipment and test material must have a temperature of between 18 and 22 degrees Celsius, as well as a maximum relative humidity of 65%. Inspect the visible condition of a delivered consignment immediately. Any damage which occurred during transport or a shortfall in quantity must be logged without delay and submitted to us by fax or email. Use the delivery note to verify that the consignment is complete. It must include an electronic air permeability tester with power plug, a permeability measuring cell with plunger and perforated disc, a suction and filling syringe, manometer liquid, an alternative filling funnel, cone grease, a packet of 12.8 mm diameter filter paper, a plugging rod, cleaning brush, digital thermometer, rubber sealing plug, operating instructions and an application DVD. Not included in the delivery scope, but useful tools and aids include reference substances of differing fineness grades, a measuring spoon or spatula, an analytical balance accurate to a thousandth of a gram, a fine brush, a bottle with screw lid, an electronic vernier caliper accurate to 0.1 millimeters, or a standard micrometer gauge and depth gauge. The control panel for the device with all indicators and control units. The digital timer for flow time accurate to a hundredth of a second. The start button. The standby indicator with the liquid level indicator. Irrespective of the model, the Blaine device must first be set up and aligned on a stable, level and vibration-free surface. 
With the aid of the filling syringe, the supplied manometer liquid must be sucked out of the dispensing bottle. The manometer liquid is filled into the U-tube. The U-tube must be clean and dry before being filled. Insert the tube into the tapered filling hole in the U-tube and slowly allow the filling oil to reach the lower etched line. Should the filling level be exceeded, excess liquid must be carefully sucked out using the syringe. Once the liquid has reached the lowest etched line, number four, the tube can be removed. The third etched line indicates the end of the measuring section and is the stopping point. The second etched line is the start of the measuring section and is the starting point. The top mark and highest etched line is the suction level of the liquid before testing. Other basic functional units are the permeability measuring cell, the measuring section between the second and third etched lines, the U-shaped tube, the connection support for the measuring cell, the control panel and operator's interface. Determining the apparatus constant K. As the Blaine method is a comparative test between a known and an unknown material, a reference sample with a known specific surface area as a comparison is required in order to determine the apparatus constant K. As supplied by the manufacturer, the device is, as a rule, not calibrated. Calibration must be carried out in which the apparatus constant K is determined for the reference substances. This is required later in order to calculate the Blaine value. If the apparatus constants have already been determined, testing can begin immediately. First, the cable is plugged in at the back and the power switched on. The green standby light comes on. Pressing the start button automatically sucks in the liquid level and the device is ready for use. First, the volume of the permeability cell is determined. The inner diameter G is measured with a micrometer gauge or, deviating from the standard, with a vernier caliper accurate to 0.01 millimeters at six different points and the mean value calculated. Then the perforated disc is placed on the lower edge of the cell. Two new filter paper discs are pressed onto the perforated disc with a clean dry rod until they are lying flat. Now, using the depth gauge, measure the inner dimensions J of the cell at six different points. The measurement should be accurate to 0.01 millimeters to give an average value. Also, measure and determine the length of plunger F at six points. It's now possible to mathematically calculate the powder bed volume V from equation one, in which J is the inner dimension of the cell, F the plunger length, and G the cell diameter. In the sample calculation, the powder bed volume is 1.935 cubic centimeters. The calculation of the powder bed sample weight, M0, the reference substance, must be carried out according to equation two. The porosity of the powder bed and the density is adopted by the reference substance. In the sample calculation, a sample weight of 2.564 grams is calculated. Density and porosity were adopted by the reference substance. Here, the adopted values are again marked in red in the equation. The appropriate apparatus constant K must be determined separately for each reference substance. The reference substance for determining the apparatus constant is shaken for at least two minutes in a closed bottle in order to dissolve any agglomerates. The bottle is then left to stand for two minutes. Finally, 
The powder bed is stirred with a clean dry rod in order to evenly distribute the fine particles. Lightly grease the cell from the outside in order to guarantee an airtight fit in the U-tube. The perforated disc is placed on the bottom of the cell. Lay a filter paper disc flat on the perforated disc. Then using the analytical balance, the calculated sample weight can be carried out to 0.001 grams. Different weighing tools can be used for this purpose. The powder bed is leveled by lightly tapping the cell wall. A second filter paper is placed on the leveled surface area. Gently but firmly press the plunger onto the powder bed until the lower face of the cup is in contact with the upper edge of the measuring cell. Then slowly withdraw the plunger approximately 5 mm, rotate it through 90 degrees and press it onto the powder bed again. Slowly withdraw the plunger from the compacted powder bed without disturbing it. Place the permeability measuring cell on the U-tube. Briefly press the start button for testing. First, the liquid is sucked in. The oil level drops slowly. As soon as the yellow light goes out, the time measurement begins on the electronic timer, which is accurate to one hundredth of a second. When the green light goes out, the stopping point of the measuring section is reached and the time measurement ends. Three time measurements of the sample are carried out. The temperature is also noted. Two more samples are prepared with new material and once again three measurements are carried out. The mean values for each sample are calculated. The same applies to the test temperature accurate to 1 degree Celsius. Now the apparatus constant K for each sample can be calculated from equation 3. Here S is equal to the specific surface areas. Rho equals density, T equals flow time, eta equals air viscosity and E equals porosity. The apparatus constant is calculated according to the guidelines. The reference substance at 2800 Blaine, the density at 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter and the porosity at 0.5 and the determined flow times and temperatures. A sample calculation for the reference substance produces an apparatus constant value K of 18.16. Calculate the apparatus constant K for the three samples. Subsequently, a mean value is produced from the three apparatus constants, thus determining the apparatus constant for a specified comparative substance. If possible, a fine, medium and coarse comparative sand should be determined with its respective apparatus constant. Calibration or recalibration is carried out for first use, after 1,000 tests, for a different type of filter paper, for another type of manometer liquid, for new perforated discs, for a new manometer tube, and in case of systematic deviations of the secondary reference cement. The apparatus constant is not transferable to other devices, not even to the same models. Determining the specific surface area of cement. Procedure. The specific surface area, the Blaine value, is to be tested on a random cement sample. A sufficient quantity of the cement to be tested must be filled into a bottle with a screw top. It must be shaken vigorously for two minutes in order to dissolve any agglomerates. The sample is then left to stand for two minutes. 
Subsequently, the cement is carefully stirred with a clean, dry rod in order to evenly distribute the fine particles. To prepare the cement bed, place the perforated disc on the lower edge of the cell and press it with a rod. A filter paper disc is laid flat on it and also pressed with a rod. Now the required cement bed mass, M1, can be calculated. The calculation takes place first with an adopted porosity of 0.5, the value of the density, rho, of the cement and the volume, V, of the cement bed. If the values are not known, they must be determined beforehand. This is done in the same way as described for determining the apparatus constant. The cement mass M1, calculated according to equation 2 for the cement bed to be prepared, is accurately weighed out to 0.001 grams and filled into the cell. The powder bed is leveled by lightly tapping the cell wall. A second filter paper is placed on the leveled surface area. Carefully press the plunger onto the powder bed until the underside of the collar touches the cap of the cell. Slowly withdraw the plunger, approximately 5 mm, rotate it through 90 degrees and press it onto the powder bed again. Slowly withdraw the plunger from the compacted powder bed without disturbing it. Caution! If the plunger falls through without any pressure, the sample weight is incorrect. The porosity must be altered until the compaction condition is correct. The same applies to a plunger which can't be completely pressed down to the stop. Repeat the test with altered porosity and a new sample until the conditions are correct. If the cement bed has been correctly compacted, the lightly greased cell is put in the tapered glass cylinder of the U-tube and the start button pressed for testing. The liquid level rises to the suction level and then begins slowly to drop. The starting point of measuring section 2 is reached and the measuring process begins. The yellow gauge light goes out. The measuring section ends upon reaching stopping point number 3. The flow time is accurately indicated to one hundredth of a second. Determining the test temperature. Perform the test a second time and establish a mean value. The cell is removed, cleaned and prepared for the next test. This also involves two runs. For sample 2, perform another two time and temperature measurements to establish the corresponding mean value. The specific surface area S1 can now be accurately calculated from the mean value of the two measurements to 10 square centimetres per gram. The apparatus constant K is selected according to the tested cement. That means a fine cement has the apparatus constant K, which was determined with a fine reference material, and a coarse cement is calculated with a coarse comparative substance and its apparatus constant. The mean value was calculated from the Blaine value of the two samples and rounded to the nearest 10 Blaine.
alkalis are released when mixing cement and water. Immediately remove any wet or dry cement which comes into contact with the skin. If cement gets into your eyes, wash them thoroughly with clean water and seek medical attention immediately. Protective clothing, rubber gloves and glasses should be worn. The oil suction speed can be altered by adjusting the potentiometer. If the device has to be shipped, repaired or disposed of, the manometer liquid must be sucked out with the syringe. Do not pour it out as this could destroy the electronics. The device may be returned to the manufacturer for repairs or calibration. This video clip shows the use of the Blaine device produced by the testing company in Berlin in accordance with EN standard 196 part 6 from 2010 for the visual clarification of the test and calibration process. The video does not replace current test standards, the guidelines of authorized personnel or the official operating instructions of the Blaine device. National safety regulations must also be observed. The shown sample calculations are fictitious and should not be adopted. All values must be determined for the first time by the user and on an individual basis.